welcome both to um, uh, one NHS Finance for for setting up this uh, this event, uh, and also to to you guys for um, for sparing some time at what is a very you know challenging and um, busy time of the month for everyone. So um, much appreciated uh, for, for you coming along to join us. Uh, and also a big thank you to my colleagues um, at Gloucestershire Hospitals who um, uh, are here to to support this uh, this this presentation. So um, we'd hoped to have a team of um, five of us uh, this afternoon. Unfortunately, Masole, uh, our one of our senior finance business partners, isn't able to make it. Um, but we have got uh, Carolyn Edwards, who is our uh, head of costing, uh, Emma Snow, uh, who is our systems implementation manager, and Tom Devitt, who is our senior finance business partner in surgery. Uh, and I'm Rob Neal. Um, I'm a project accountant at the Trust uh, and involved in some of the sort of financial training that we're going to uh, talk about this afternoon. Um, so. Just to make a start, first of all, I'm hoping everyone can see see the first slide of our presentation. I was hoping for a few nods. Or, yes, excellent. Thank you. Um, so first of all, just to introduce the, the trust. Um, uh, we're, we're down in the uh, southwest uh, region. Uh, we're all uh, predominantly finance people here, so um, we measure size in turnover and and so on. So we're we have a turnover of uh, 676 million. Uh, about 8,000 staff uh, and about uh, 900 beds. Um, we operate over two main sites, uh, one in Gloucestershire, sorry, one in Gloucester, uh, which is the Gloucestershire Royal Hospital, and the other in Cheltenham, uh, about eight miles apart, uh, Cheltenham General Hospital. Uh, we, we're also active in a number of community sites uh, across uh, the county. Um, so uh, whilst these sites are managed by uh, a different trust. Um, we we hold clinics and uh, do, do operating sessions and so on in places like Stroud and Chuxbury, Sirencester and Dursley. Uh, and like a lot of other organisations, um, we're also um, heavily involved in in virtual um, care as well. So the the idea of the the virtual ward uh, is quite um, quite active now. Um, also, a little bit about our um, service improvement journey for us as a as a finance team. Um, we 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 achieved um, level one accreditation back in 2019, and and in fact last Wednesday uh, marked to the day the fifth anniversary um, of what we call our Count Me In program, um, and this is designed. Uh, this is all about trying to embrace um, service improvement um, and to 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 to. You know, to, to, to really pull the team together and to give it give us some focus. Um, we were delighted in 2021 where we we managed to uh, we, we won the Southwest uh, Finance Team of the Year uh, and we also uh, alongside colleagues across the uh, the Gloucestershire system um, got uh, we, were, we were awarded we were winner of the Going the Extra Mile Award for the Southwest region. So uh, 2021 was a very a very proud year um, for us as a as a as a team, uh, and we also achieved our level two um, accreditation uh, in 2021. Um, and as you join us now, we're 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 in that sort of process of thinking: Are we ready for level three? Um, and I think, as a team, we think we are. Um, and um, you know, I think the advice we went to the Value Maker Conference uh, in December um, last year, and uh, the advice there from other Level Three organisations was, don't don't wait too long. You know, if you think you're ready, go for it. Uh, so I think um, as a team, we think we're ready, and we're thinking of going for it, but we haven't quite uh, pushed ourselves over the edge yet. But that's what that's our plan is to move on towards Level Three, and that would uh, obviously that would be a huge achievement for us as a, as an organisation. Um, so yeah, our, our Count Me In program started in January 2019, the 24th of January to be precise. Um, and and I, I guess I just wanted to to be really clear that that, that we're not standing here as any sort of, of of expert. You know, we 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 are very much about trying to learn from others and to share good practice. Um, you know, we don't need to reinvent the wheel here. We're all chasing the same. The same aims, and we are very, very keen to to listen and and to learn from colleagues around the country. 
and in fact our our journey started um, after a, a group of us were at the Southwest Conference back in 2018, I think it was the end of 2018, and we heard a presentation from um, uh, Royal United Hospitals in Bath, and um, we were blown away by by some of the amazing work that they were doing there. And you know, we came back to the trust and said, look, you know, we we can do this. We want to be part of this journey. So um, that that's where it started for us. So this isn't something that that we created. That journey started by listening to to others, and um, you know, we were inspired by Bath, and they. Yeah, they were very much the start of this. I don't know if they quite realised the important part they played, but boy, they did. Um, uh, in terms of um, the, the, the programme we have, um, uh, we, we have uh, uh, frequent, we have uh, weekly um, team meetings. We have various service improvement uh, groups going. So we have a, a training group, group, we have a personal and professional development group, we have what we call our RH3 group, which is here happy and healthy. Uh, we have a systems group, we, we have a social group. They're all quite, uh, we also have what we call peer groups. Um, um, so, and they're all quite um, uh, active. Um, and we, what we're trying to do is ensure that all the team are engaged with at least one of these groups. Um, when we don't want people to be overstretched, um, but we want everyone to have at least some involvement in our journey. Um, and um, as I said, we, we also recognise there's a lot of really good stuff going on around the country. So um, we're hoping when we get to the, the questions at the end that actually it may be a bit of sharing your good practice as well so that we can get something from this. Um, so today we want to focus on the work of our training group. Um, we could have picked any one of the groups actually, but we, we want to go for the training group today. Um, so our our training that what we see as our training at uh, the training that we offer at the moment uh, was launched in February 19. Uh, lots of disruption over the, uh, uh, the, 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 the pandemic period. Um, we, we, we run two main courses um, aimed at our budget holders and requisitioners and, and those involved in, in any aspect of financial control in the trust. Uh, we started predominantly face to face, um, but we had to switch that to, to virtual for obvious reasons. And now we have more of a sort of hybrid format. Um, so we're, we're still quite keen to embrace uh, virtual training, but equally there's a place for face to face and we try to use that whenever we can. Um, and um, we're also quite keen to signpost um, some of the external training that's available and uh, a big shout out to the HFMA for the bite size training because that's something that um, we think is uh, is very valuable, very good. And we're trying to encourage our um, not just budget holders, but but people involved in financial processes around the trust to, to use uh, the, the HFMA bite size training. Um, in, in terms of numbers, uh, I have to I haven't updated this graph for a little while. So uh, the 2023-24 is actually uh, uh, the first half of the year. So um, but we've seen a little over 600 people uh, go through our our training. Um, uh, the, the first year you get that sort of enthusiasm uh, to start with. Um, so we had a, a, a really big take up in the first year. But despite the pandemic, the numbers have still um, uh, stayed pretty, pretty, pretty good. Um, uh, we're looking to refresh the material. Um, in fact, we have been refreshing material, but we're looking to make some fairly significant changes um, over the next few months, which we'll we'll come on to. But but over 600 people in the last sort of four or five years, which um, we think we think is a pretty decent, uh, pretty decent number. And we're hitting the right people as well, which is um, is important. We've had some great feedback uh, in terms of um, of the training that we've offered. So, um, you know, I think this is this has helped to, to fuel our enthusiasm to, to keep going with this because we do get some very good uh, feedback and um, you know we th we think we're on the right lines, um, so I won't read them. But uh, you, you can see that I've I've pulled out a couple in green there, which um, you know if I could have a badge made with some of those comments on, I think I probably would. But uh, yeah, we're very proud of some of the feedback we've uh, we've had. Um, in terms of uh, one of the things that we we were concerned about um, with our training and this might be something that others uh, suffer with as well is that sometimes you uh, you you get the people that want to be trained 
Um, and we were very aware that, um, you know, our budget holders, uh, particularly our budget holders, because those, those are very influential uh, to our financial position. Um, we're very aware that uh, we needed to make sure that all our budget holders were were reaching a level of, of financial competence um, and showing a level of financial ability. So we wanted to get to everyone, not just those that are interested in training. So we have developed um, what we call our essential to role training, which is a virtual training course, um, which has a it's a bit like I'm not allowed to use the term mandatory training, apparently, it's a, but it's very like our mandatory training, our budget holders. Uh, if they want to be a budget holder, they have to complete this training uh, on an annual basis and they have to pass the uh, the test, um, which we have at the end. Um, uh, for most, in fact, I would imagine for everyone on this uh, on this call, um, you'd find it pretty uh, pretty straightforward. But it's just making sure that our budget holders have um, a, a basic awareness of of the financial responsibilities that they have. Um, so uh, yeah, so we've developed this essential to role training, and we're getting all, we're, we're we're on the way to get all our all 280 of our budget holders um, through that training. Um, I thought. Um, Actually, we'll go back to that slide. Um, one of the things I wanted to mention is when we developed this essential to role training, um, we we wanted to use or we wanted the finance team to be actively involved in providing the training. Um, so our this is a big shout out to our finance analysts in the trust because you know their day to day is is you know it, it's month end, it's journals, it's it's financial processes, and. Um, each one of them absolutely stepped up um, and helped to pull this training together. Um, and they've all done, I'm going to play them a little, uh, I'm going to play them to you in a little bit, but they've all done these little video clips which form part of the training that we provide. Um, so completely outside of their normal comfort zone, but they they absolutely stepped up and they got a lot from it as well. And they, again, they've had some, some really positive feedback from within the trust. Um, so I'm hoping the second the next time I go around asking for volunteers, it won't be um, I, I'm not going to have to convince them quite as much because I think they're quite keen to get involved now. But it was um, they really they, they really stepped up and um, yeah, very, very grateful for their contribution. Um, so just take you through some of the essential to role training that we provide. So this is a, a, a requirement that all our budget holders have to complete. Um, it, it takes you through various. I'm not going to go through slide by slide, but it takes you through various uh, aspects of, um, of 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 financial procedures and financial control and some of the abbreviations that we and acronyms and so on that we use in finance. Um, and there's all sorts of you know slotting thing, you know, moving things around, and um, so it's very interactive. Um, uh, so lots of slides here. I'm not going to. So I'm not going to go through the detail. And I, I'm going to now play the first clip, which is from Deepthi, who is one of our finance analysts who, um, who, who supports diagnostics and specialties in women's and children. So uh, I'll let Deepthi do the, rest, the next bit for me. Hello, my name is Deepthi and I work as finance analyst for the diagnostic and specialities in women's and children's team. As a trust budget holder, you are responsible for managing your budget and to have an understanding of all the financial transactions taking place within the cost center you manage. This includes controlling expenditure and ensuring that correct payroll and procurement guidelines are followed. We have lots of support in place to help you, including documentation, digital systems, training, and of course, support from our finance team. This e-learning package will give you an overview so you know what is available, where to access it, and who to contact. To ensure the financial well-being and sustainability of the trust, it is critical that our budget holders carry out their financial responsibilities in a professional and diligent manner. The finance team will, of course, provide training and support, but ultimately, the role of the budget holder cannot be overemphasized. Can I just ask, were people seeing the video then? Because on, oh, you weren't seeing the video. Right. No, we weren't able to. So you you heard it, but you couldn't see anything. No, we okay. had it. I had better, yeah. but didn't see. It. Sorry about that. Let's see. We'll see. We'll have hopefully we'll have a better better look next time. So um, that was deep thing. There was a nice video which you've missed out on there, so you won't get to see deep thing. Let's try Evelina. See if this works. 
My name is Evelina and I work as finance analyst for surgery division. It is important to remember that the trust has obligation to stay within financial balance and ensure our expenditure is no more than income we generate from the activities we undertake. As a budget holder, you are critical to the financial well-being of the trust and carry a responsibility to stay within the budget that has been agreed. You also have the ability to heavily influence what the trust is spending. We conduct an annual planning cycle to agree the budget settings methodology, engage with our budget holders and ensure budgets are signed off and agreed at the beginning of each financial year. On a monthly basis, we report what has actually been spent and the income we have generated compared to our plan or budget. This is reported against departments and subjective heading, such as clinical suppliers. Our budget holders can access the cost centers through the finance SharePoint site. This offers a range of both current and historic information. The front page of the SharePoint site looks like this. This graphically shows the financial position. Most budget holders will be mainly responsible for expenditure rather than income. For those who prefer to see information in a tabular format, there are other options available. The menu bar looks like this. For example, let's look at the budget holder report. The report shows a year-to-date overspend of £40,805. In this example, the budget holder would need to explain why medical and surgical equipment is so adverse to budget. Emma, shall I hand over to you to uh, carry on from here? Great, thanks Rob. Um, so, I'm Emma Snow. Finance Systems Implementation Manager. So here's um, another slide. Oh, presentation's gone down at the moment, Rob. Rob, do you mind sharing it again? Because it... Thanks. So it's the slide before. That's it. Um, so this is another extract um, from our introductory e-learning for budget holders about counter fraud awareness. Just telling them everyone's got a responsibility for counter fraud awareness and what to do if they think there might be some sort of unexpected transaction. Um, and also giving them the tip to keep everyone's mobile phone numbers just in case um, email addresses have been hacked. So then the next slide is another of the videos from the training, which is Ali, who's another of our finance analysts supporting the medicine division. So would you like to play it, Rob? Hello, my name is Ali and I work as the finance analyst for the medical division. To support this training, we have a quick reference guide for our budget holders, which provides information on key members of the finance team, systems available, policies and procedures, and how to access further support and training. The quick reference guide is available on the Trust's intranet. To access the home page, please click on Departments, then Corporate, then Finance. Once you're on the Finance page, Click for budget holders. You may find it useful to download the document so you can easily access the information when you need to. The first section of our guide covers the finance shared services team. This team is responsible for processing all financial transactions and also include the procurement and counter for teams. It also covers the financial business partnering team who provide your main day-to-day -day contact and can help with budget queries, financial forecasts, as well as other financial issues. The second section of the guide shows the digital systems we use at the Trust. This includes links to these systems, 
user guides and the system admin team should you require any further help. The third section shows links to our intranet page and to our policies and procedures. It is very important that we follow agreed policies and procedures. The final section of our guide signposts the further training we have available for all our budget holders. All budget holders are required to attend our financial foundation training and financial awareness courses, both of which run around six times per year. As a budget holder, we will send you regular invitations to these and other courses we think you may find helpful. Hello, my name is Ali. Hello, my name is hey, So the question that we're all asking ourselves now is, have I got what it takes to be a Gloucestershire Hospital's budget holder? So here's a few questions from our introductory budget holder e-learning for you to try. And they're intended to be quite simple for people new to finance, just to check people have listened during the course. So please put your hands up on Teams to show what answer you would give to these questions. So first question, true or false, only senior managers have a responsibility for counter fraud awareness. So who thinks it's true? And who thinks it's false? Yes, those who thought it was false are right. Everyone has responsibility for counter fraud awareness. And the next question is, which of these months fall under financial quarter three? And you can choose multiple answers. So who thinks September? Who thinks October? Who thinks November? And who thinks December? So yes, the people who said October, November and December are right, of course. So the next question is, which of these are responsibilities of a budget holder? And again, you can choose more than one. So who thinks it's to spend all the money as quickly as possible? <laughs> who thinks day-to-day -day management of budget? Who thinks sharing budget problems with their line manager and finance business partners? And who thinks manage your team spend within allocated yearly budget? So yes, the first one is a red herring, of course. We don't want people to just spend all the money as quickly as possible. And all the other three answers are correct. So well done, everyone. You can be budget holders with us. So the next slide is um, next steps to develop our training further. So um, what we're looking at is developing systems thinking training. Um, firstly, secondly, developing our training support to junior doctors. So they're an essential group that we need to target, both in terms of the influence they have on our financial position and the experience they bring from other NHS trusts. And thirdly, develop more interactive training. So we've had great feedback from the essential to role training material that we've had so far, but we'd like to develop this further. So we're thinking about a range of eight minute essential sessions focusing on specific topics. So developing case for change, budget setting, taking corrective action, capital investment, et cetera. So on the next slide, uh, this is, we'll tell you a bit more about systems thinking now. So systems thinking means better outcomes for less money. And our refreshed trust finance strategy now includes systems thinking training as a result of the introduction of integrated care systems. And systems thinking is a range of techniques to solve complex problems known as wicked problems. And wicked problems are where we take an action that we think will help, only to find it doesn't work or even makes things worse. And systems thinking helps us work out why, often by finding hidden feedback cycles. So on the next slide, we've got an example of a systems thinking story called Shifting the Burden. So this is a common story that happens in systems thinking. Um, applied to the context of the NHS. So on this example, we can see that when A&E gets overcrowded, allocating more funding to A&E makes other services more underfunded, which means the other services can see fewer people and then even more people come to A&E so that it gets even more overcrowded. So systems thinking diagrams let us find points of leverage where application of a relatively small amount of resources saves a larger amount of resources further down the line. So this means that in many cases, we can find ways to do things which are both 
lower cost and result in better outcomes for patients. And across the NHS, systems thinking training is currently delivered by external consultants. So it's too expensive to roll out to lots of staff. So by training NHS staff to create our own systems thinking diagrams, it saves having to always pay for consultants to do it. And the staff we train can also train others using the same materials. And the materials can be fully edited to adapt them for different teams' needs. So we want to develop the first free systems thinking training materials for the NHS to roll out locally and share with other trusts. And please let us know if you'd like to join our group to share the initial draft materials. And now I'd like to hand over to my colleague, Tom, for the next section about EVO. Thank you, Emma. Yeah, so we just wanted to um, highlight a, a tangible example of engagement that we have with uh, uh, our budget holders across our organisation um, and not necessarily in saying that we're, we're getting exactly right there's uh, we, we definitely think there's room for improvement but this is this is the the kind of journey we've been on and we've started in our, in our organisation at Gloucestershire hospitals so um, if you just want to go on to the the next slide Rob uh, so yeah so I've been at the trust since since April last year but and, th and these this kind of framework was started a few months before that so it's been running just over a year basically you know, as a finance business partner, we often I often talk to budget holders and managers, and you know they say that you know we've got uh, so much data, we've got we're drowning in data. We've got you know our monthly management accounts, our forecast, our monthly activity data, and that's all just from finance. And they've got uh, various information from GERFT and Model Hospital and, and and other sources, and they don't really know how to um, put that together into in a framework that will enable them to make the right decisions and make the best use of the data that they've got. So. Uh, I think this uh, Gloucestershire hospitals, we were trying to come up with a, a model that we could use to to do that and to make it easier for services to improve that improve themselves and use the data more effectively. And the one that uh, the our PMO and our finance team decided on was to look at this uh, the Evo the HFMA framework that they'd set up back in 2019 and developed by the HFMA, uh, uh, but also taking our own direction so to make it our own. And and you know we've made perhaps made mistakes along the way as well but also we've made, had some good outcomes I just wanted to to come out um, highlight those to you so the Evo itself uh, facilitates the engagement of a, an MDT um, or multidisciplinary team in understanding the use of patient level information and costs and its relation to value in health healthcare with the ultimate purpose being to achieve the best outcome for the patients within the resources available uh, and it's a, a kind of framework that's facilitated uh, by the trust by our team uh, with a core group of individuals at service and specialty level and it runs over the course of a few months uh, rob just want to go on to the, the next slide so the aim is to improve nhs clinicians understanding of patient level information and costing data so they can use it on, um, start using it on a regular basis to support improvements in the efficiency and effectiveness of how patient care is delivered with the ultimate goal being of course to provide to provide high quality care for all patients and service users uh, as i say it's an, it's an mdt approach but it's about creating that time, resource and direction to begin using PLIX and other benchmarking data collaboratively in order to identify unwarranted clinical variation. Uh, the key point being that it's very much at specialty level. It's not division uh, a divisional level. We look at each in, uh, individual specialties in, a, in, a, in much more granular detail and a, a deep dive into each one. So it is quite uh, it is quite intense and it's qu quite a, a lot of detail to get into. And it does mean it does mean that we were only going one specialty at a time and it takes a, a number of months but the outcomes are uh, ultimately to try and as I say create a greater understanding of how PLIX data can support improvement product um, projects uh, better understanding and agreement of um, about what finance data is useful in improvement project uh, projects and provides opportunities for clinicians finance and informatics to work closely together on those improvement projects uh, but it, it, and it's about creating a regular rhythm of meetings between those various groups across the hospital uh, working together more collaboratively. So if we go on to the next slide, Rob. Yeah, so this just highlights who is involved in in EVO and key to the success of EVO is having champions at exec level, a director level, so a clinical champion, potentially the medical director and the finance champion, 
um, usually the director of finance. And as I say, there's a, it happens over a number of months, all building up to a presentation to those champions on the outcomes that we've uh, and the, the values that we found during during the course of a, those meetings. But it is very much an MDT approach made up of clinicians, operational managers, finance and BI, and they attend meetings and deep, as I say, deep dive into the data, but not necessarily all finance data. A lot of it is is operational data as well. And we've got some slides a bit further on demonstrating, or the next one, demonstrating that kind of what we have in each uh, meeting so far. So Rob, if you want to go on to the next slide. So this is just the methodology of how we've used uh, the Evo uh, framework. We've had, as I say, four sessions over a number of months. Uh, and session one is very much a sort of ground bre uh, breaking the ground and, and understanding what sources of information we have. As I say, it's not necessarily all finance driven. It's uh, a lot of it ha in some of the sessions we've run across specialties has been around uh, uh, operational data about RTT performance and other things. Uh, so again, as I say, not all uh, finance, but also trying to understand what is important to the specialty that we're looking at. So in surgery, we used uh, ophthalmology, which is why you can see that. Uh, uh, detailed in these slides, but we've also done it in gastro in, in medicine as well. Uh, uh, agreeing what good looks like and also a focus for uh, future sessions where we do a deep dive into the into the data. Uh, session two would usually happen at a, a time scale in the future. So I think the original Evo methodology was that these sessions happen every every month. We haven't managed that in our trust and they do tend to take place every quarter or so. so it does meet, and although the, the focus is that services should be working on understanding the data in between, there have, I think it's fair to say, improved, uh, been some cases where we've lost a little bit of momentum because we haven't been able to get sessions set up uh, in the in uh, quick enough time and with, um, soon enough after the first session to, to really um, bottom out what we've discussed. But the, se uh, the second session, as I say, the, and session three are more deep dive into the data and what we've agreed what the focus will be. And then the final session, the session four, is where we feed back to our uh, our champions at exec level and share our experiences also with other clinical teams about what we've learned and what we can do and what we're going to implement now as a result of uh, of the work, the journey we've been on and understanding the data. So if we look at the next slide. Yeah, so this is just an example of some of the data and dashboard we use in the sessions just to uh, go through the uh, the data for each specialty. So I won't, I won't go into these in too much detail, but as you can see, it's, uh, it gives you information on activity, BI data, finance, uh, and, and other even non-finance information around um, costing um, and activity in RTT. Okay, so if we go on to the next one. Oh yes, and yeah. So our, these are our Evo workshops in action. We've had uh, a number of them running over a number of months, uh, going back quite over a year, as I say. Uh, and you can see it's it's important to get full engagement, but the right people in the room, but to get as as much engagement across across the service as possible with a, a clin clinician, matron, uh, general manager, but also our BI colleagues as well, as well as finance. Okay, so if we go on to the the next slide. And just to give you some uh, perspective from uh, some of my perspective on it as a FPP, I think I think that, yeah, as I say, there's still still some work to do, but because uh, surgery uh, uh, Gloucester Hospital is a huge division, 160 million pounds and experiencing financial challenges, some of which, yeah, would be quite probably quite similar across a number of organisations. There's just a few reasons there for why we would be ha having financial difficulties, and they're definitely things we recognise. But I think we're in terms of getting underneath them and understanding what's going on at a patient level and using the, the costing data most, most most effectively, the Evo sessions have definitely provided a framework to do that. And it enables us to ident identify areas of exception and to pose questions in, uh, to our clini clinical and operational colleagues in a format they're actually, uh, they can actively engage with. And I think that's that's been the most useful aspect of the sessions from my perspective. Uh, and they have they are challenging. They do require a lot of data and a lot of uh, preparation beforehand in order to prepare for them uh, but they are they are they do ultimately enable us to better understand and articulate the financial challenge that um, our services face 
and I think that was it. Unless, uh, Carrie, you had anything you wanted to come in on on the Evo sessions, given your perspective yeah. as the costing accountant. Yeah, so um, the Evo sessions have been a, an, an absolute amazing um, piece of work that we've all got involved in. And and I think, you know, we're coming to the end of um, the ophthalmology one now, but some of the things that, that have come out of it by far from my perspective, because I've, I've been at every single one of them and we always try and look at some of the things that we can learn um, not just from one service but how we can bring the learning from from one service into another one as well and there's been some amazing pieces of um, sort of like thought process uh, thought processes and um, and systems that we've learned from from these evo um, sessions um, and and the the biggest thing for me, um, especially because I always like to push the the Plix agenda anyway, um, is actually it was more about getting the right people in the room, and we did that. We did that really really well. Um, and 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 just from the from the feedback that we've had from the clinicians, um, and we we always started to sort of say from a Plix point of view is that. Um, you know, we always want to make sure that clinicians and corporate staff talk to each other. And actually, that was the, the main feedback that we had was that, um, you know, it was it was actually a clinician that said, you didn't you know what? I didn't quite realize how much data that you have to go through in order for, um, for you know, for, for you to map costs to activity that for, for the position to look right. Um, and and it was all about getting the right people in the room and we did that. So I thought we, we did really well with that. And the other point I just wanted to make was that um, uh, and, and this, this will form part of our feedback as the as the final session was the five stages of data grief, um, which always found was was quite amusing for the, the clinicians. Um, and. Uh, and it starts off with denial, then anger, then bargaining and then depression and then resolution. Um, and it was all about um, them sort of sort of poo pooing the data to begin with. And then then they suddenly realised, oh, OK, yeah, this is the data that we record and or or whether it's on a different system. So, yes, yeah, so there's some some fantastic work that's come out of the Evo sessions. Thanks, Carrie. So. I think then that is concludes the Evo section. So if I hand back to Rob, who we I think you're going to conclude our slide pack as well. Yeah, thank, thanks, Tom, and thanks, Carrie. Yes, yeah, so I, I just wanted to wrap up with a few of our conclusions, and then we have a few minutes at the end if if there's any uh, any questions that you may have. So um, um, so delivery of training and and encouraging engagement. Um, yeah, we've we've learned so much from that. I, I don't think I can better the way that Carrie Carrie described it there. But um, so it's a real engagement. Uh, sorry, it's a real priority for us um, to, to to encourage that engagement. Um, we, we we've given you a, a couple of extremes, I think, in terms of um, the, the style of material that we we use and who we aim it at. So um, some of the um, data that we would take to an Evo session, very different from the sort of data that we would share with a, you know, with a budget holder talking about a, you know, a budget expenditure variance, for example. So um, we're, we're very keen to adapt the material um, that, 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 that we're taking uh, to, 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 to suit the, the audience. Um, the essential to role training, I think, has been transformational in terms of the way that we think we're going to be taking forward training in the future. Uh, we've had some great feedback and I think um, that that interactive session um, has been good, not only in terms of the, the recipients, but actually also good for the finance team in terms of pulling that uh, material together. I think we've, we've got quite a lot out of it. Certainly our finance analysts um, have. Um, we 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 are very clear that we've got to reach out um, to as many people as we can. That that everybody in this organisation um, can influence our um, financial position. Um, so we want to reach out to to everybody. Basically, um, it, it doesn't matter whether you're you know an ancillary member of staff or the chief executive. Everyone um, has got a role to play, and we're we're trying to reach out to as many people as we can. Uh, promoting the uh, the interactive training. 
um, we, you know, we're, we're, we're very keen to, to engage different ways of, 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 of do, doing things differently. So the systems thinking, the Evo, I think are examples of things that we've, um, yeah, we've, we've really learned from, especially the Evo. I mean, I, I think systems thinking is still very early stages, but Evo, um, it, it's been, yeah, transformational, I think, in terms of the way that uh, um, it's made us think. And also, as Carrie has said, that the feedback loop, you get, you get better feedback and that improves the product, it improves our costing. Um, which means that you're in a better, you've got better foundations for the, you know, for the next year. So um, it, it's a, it's a really good um, um, cycle to be in. Um, and I guess the, the last thing is just to say um, our uh, desire, um, uh, hope, um, ambition is to um, is to get that level three accreditation. So as a team, that's that's what we're 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 looking at next. Um, and um, yeah, that's 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 the next. Uh, that's the next thing we're going to be we're going to be trying to, to focus on. Um, and I think that's that's basically it from us. Um, the plan was to, to finish 10 or 15 minutes early intentionally in case there are any uh, questions that, that people might have. So um, I think I'll shut up there and um, and open the open the floor to, to questions if, if there are any. Just break okay. the silence. Sorry. So, uh, <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> no, sorry. So, so one thing is, uh, I think uh, this this is all very intrigued, and uh, uh, honestly, I mean, it's, it's it's a long way that that you have gone on, and uh, of course, I mean, it it gives you the rewards as well. So, my, my question to you is, I mean, uh, how was the um, how was the uh, acceptance of this type of training? Uh, from the budget holder point of view. So, I mean, were they eager to contribute or, I mean, and also, I mean, you shared um, one assessment as well, I mean, because you assess them. So, what if they fail? So, do they have to mandatory uh, sign up to, to the next meeting or um, how do you go about, I mean, uh, training those sort of people, I mean, who haven't got no uh, sort of uh, financial acumen at all, uh, but that, but they they are budget holders, and uh, by hook and crook, I mean somehow they they have to they have to find a way to uh, pick off the box. So thank you. That's a great question. I I, I think there's sort of two questions there. One one was um, ensuring that everybody is undertaking the training. Um, I think I mentioned earlier that you get you you'll get people who are very enthusiastic about training, and you'll get some people who who hide. Um, and the whole idea of making it essential to roll is that there is no there is no hiding. So um, so um, in the past, it's all been about encouragement and you know getting getting momentum going in terms of of getting people to undertake training. This one, I guess, it's got the stick as well as the carrot in that you know those people that don't undertake the training, um, you know, we will be flagged to us. So I, I get a monthly report that shows me. Um, who has completed the training and who hasn't? Um, I'd like to think um, that that we're not we're not trying to that the the, the test the, uh, isn't designed to catch people out. Um, it and it's certainly not aimed at qualified accountants, for example. It, it's a it 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 it's the type of test that that anyone with reasonable financial skills would be able to complete. Um, ultimately, if someone is unable to pass the test, then frankly, I don't think they should be a budget holder. Um, but I think that's unlikely to happen. Um, um, certainly our first, um, if, if anyone was struggling, um, then there's plenty of um, support and encouragement um, that, that, you know, the, the, the business partnering teams would be there for them. Uh, they'd be more than happy to do. In fact, I know one or two people have asked for you know, a bit of support, you know, can you explain what this means and where do I find that? And, you know, so it, it opens up conversations. So um, we're not trying to catch people out. Um, and I think with 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 support and encouragement, I think we can get everyone over the line. But the ultimate sanction would be if someone, for whatever reason, hasn't completed the training, um, then then we would have to stop them being a budget holder. Um, 
but but we haven't reached that point yet and I, I hope we never do but um yeah that's the ultimate sanction but thanks for the question good one brilliant thank you any other questions i think there was a question in the chat it was uh oh carrie you've answered it yeah about what systems we use to share plix data with clinicians uh yes and yeah. power bi yeah so we uh we I was trying to type really quickly, to, <laughs> to, hoping Rob was going to fill it out the space. Um, yeah, so we use Power BI at the moment, and and we'd created um, a whole suite of uh, dashboards um, using the the Plix information, um, primarily to um, ultimately share with with all uh, life with you know licenses um, or license users. Uh, but at the moment, it was used primarily for the Evo sessions, and then we will provide over the next few months some training on Power BI uh, Plix dashboards. OK, thank you for that, Carrie. Any? Oh, and I, can yeah. I just ask another question? Sorry, um, I think I think this is the opportunity for me to to ask uh, some some more questions. So. Uh, one thing uh, that we, I mean, I, I work in the Northwest, so um, we, we've been trying to design a training plan uh, overarching for, for the finance that, that does include uh, budget training and, of, of course, I mean, um, the educational sessions uh, with regards to the Plix apps and all of those stuff. So um, you, you talked about the budget stuff and uh, um, you, I think you've explained it really well, I mean, how it actually fits into the overall agenda. Uh, whereby, I mean, you've got the accreditation level two, and of course, I mean, you are now aiming for uh, level three. So what, what are the other areas? I may have missed it. Sorry, apologies. I mean, uh, what, what are the other areas that, that you are looking to cover? So, I mean, is, is one one aspect is the finance, uh, which which includes the budget holder training. Uh, but then, of course, I mean, some some of the education session like uh, uh, Plix stuff uh, is not, it's not something which is straightforward. So, I mean, it, it has to be on a rolling sort of a plan. So. Um, how do you go about uh, dealing with that? So, uh, it, it, shall I answer it from a Plix perspective? Um, so, um, in terms of um, the reporting for, for Plix, um, we didn't have um, some uh, sort of dashboards readily to use um, for a while, um, and only in the last sort of year or two that we started creating the actual dashboards itself we actually use um civica um and they have their own suite of of dashboards but we went to go with a, a, a um our own particular dashboards but of course with that you need to have um access and you know your two-factor authentication and and so on so um we're in the process of um creating the dashboards which in itself um is is obviously time consuming but then we will once we've given access to our finance colleagues to use it for their own agenda as well um we will then provide training on how to use a the the particular dashboards because with plix data of course you can you can create one dashboard which will be meaningful what to one person but not to another person so we we're trying to create a dashboard that is, is meaningful to lots of different people. Um, and then and then once we've provided that training um, uh, internally, and then we'll we'll issue it out uh, to everyone who needs access from a service perspective as well. Brilliant, thank you. So what 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 are the other areas that you're looking to cover? Um, is it the PLICS and uh, the budget training? So uh, there's a there's a number of areas So we, we um, we're, we're creating what we, the next plan is to create a number of these sort of eight minutes. We quite like this approach to virtual training. So we've got this idea to create these eight minute um, short, sharp, shock type um, training sessions. So on things like um, budget setting, uh, taking corrective action, preparing a business case. Um, we, we've got some specific training that we're looking to introduce to our junior doctors because um, they're a very influential group of people. Um, and actually a, a group of people who you know, are rotating from from trust to trust. So they bring with them quite a lot of uh, uh, skills and, and knowledge from other organisations. So uh, we view that as being a particularly beneficial thing to get involved with. Uh, so it's, it's partly an opportunity for us to talk to them about 
the the important part they can play in in helping our uh, you know, our, our financial position, but also to learn from them in terms of other you know, other organisations. I mean, I'll give you a really a uh, probably a very silly example, but um, uh, we had um, I think it was an intake. I don't know, it was last year or the year before, but one of our intakes, they were talking about the um, the thickness of the paper that we were using in Gloucester hospitals, and um, you know, and, and that was that was the comments, you know. So, so sometimes, you know, they were they were just commenting that you know how much are we spending on stationery um, because they come from trusts where they were using a much thinner paper. Now I know that's a silly example, but but you know I'd never picked up on that. Uh, we need these types of these these groups of staff that rotate from organisation to organisation to help us share best practice. Uh, so yeah, we've got a number of um, number of avenues and our training team, um, which actually Masole uh, chairs, I said, unfortunately, Masole couldn't make it this afternoon, but um, they're, they're, they're always open to uh, suggestions and ideas. And the idea being that everybody in the team, you know, if they, if they have a, a an interest in training, you know, they can gravitate towards that group and they can help to influence its direction and participate in its delivery. Um, so I can't give you a, a long list, um, but that's some of the ones that we're going after at the moment. Thanks very much. Thank you. I noticed in the chat there's um, some questions about the, the various packs that we're using. Uh, we're more than happy to share any material um, that people want. Um, there have been some issues because uh, our, our IT team or our media, I think they're called the media team rather than IT, um, but the platform they use um, is something that um, I don't think all trusts have. So we can certainly, sh it's like the um, essential to role training, we can share the the link, the, you know, the, the, how it works, but but we 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 actually looked for one trust whether they could just put their own slides in it effectively and and you know just just tweak it rather than having to start again but i think it it wasn't uh, it wasn't a tweaking uh role uh, they couldn't just tweak it um i don't understand all the complexities behind that but it was more difficult than we thought but we're very happy to share any material that uh, that people would like and vice versa if you if we share we we would we'd love to see the sort of material that you guys are using as well any other Conscious, we've got we've only got three or four minutes left. Um, but any other final uh, questions before we before we close the session? Oh, yeah. Hi, am I? It's not really a question, but I just wanted to say, uh, massive, well done, you guys. I think that was fantastic. Um, the entire, uh, I mean, budget holders usually would have that kind of a. a they have a lot of things in their hands already and just to give them that little bit of financial uh, like instruction as to how we really look at things and you know it just makes a lot of sense I think this is beautiful well done guys thank you so much that's really appreciated we're I think we're probably all in that boat aren't we we're, we're all doing marvelous things and it's so nice to to get some feedback like that so much appreciated and thank you okay think we're going to close the session there any any final comments from my colleagues no nope. okay um we're going to finish uh, three minutes early crikey it's almost like it was planned right uh thank you all very much indeed uh and um have a good month end and enjoy your uh enjoy the rest of your day thank you all cheerio thank, thank you. you thank you thank you thanks everyone